So, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that I've been running something of a survey in the community posts. I asked for discussion about four particular characters. Ingrid from various Capcom works, Lucky Chloe from Tekken 7, and Marie Rose and Honoka from Dead or Alive. No poll, no question, just discuss. Most of you might have picked up that there are some subtle similarities between these characters, but the one quality they all share is that they are all hated by their respective fan bases. And I feel like I must stress that they are hated. Not disregarded, not disinterested, hated. The kind of hate that elicits a groan or a sigh if you so much as mention these characters. The kind of hate that one has to commit to their memory. To put it plainly, these characters live rent-free in the heads of many. So today I'd like to discuss these characters based on the feedback that's been posted, and see if I can make sense of the conversation around them. Probably the oddest character on this lineup is Ingrid from, uh, Capcom. Before I talk about Ingrid, it's worth going over her history, if only to highlight how confusing her origins are. Ingrid was originally slated to be one of three original fighters in a game called Capcom Fighting All-Stars. In that game, she and two other originals, DD and Rook, are code holders. Fighters with supernatural powers who work for a mystery organization, hired by Mike Hagar to disarm a bomb in Metro City. She is associated with the code words Eternal Goddess and Isis. Fighting All Stars was then cancelled, and we never got to see how that plot would unfold, but the concept of an all Capcom crossover would later be regurgitated into Capcom Fighting Evolution, a low budget slapdash asset dump that failed spectacularly. Oddly, this is where Capcom decided for Ingrid to make her debut, complete with the only brand new 2D sprite in the whole game. In Fighting Evolution, Ingrid is some kind of sun goddess who uses her powers to banish Pyron, I think. She would later appear as a bonus character in Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max, a PSP port of the original game on PS1. In that game, Ingrid is a time-traveling soul magician who claims to be the progenitor of Psycho Power. In her ending, she defeats M. Bison, Deadass steals the Psycho Drive, and disappears into space with it. This would mark Ingrid's last playable appearance in a fighting game, forever banished into the Capcom bin of cameos and crossovers. Her last playable appearance would be in Project Cross Zone 2, where she resumes her role as a pan-dimensional crossover god. All this to say that there is zero consistency regarding who or what Ingrid even is. Even her latest bio in the Capcom character database doesn't tell us anything about her. Which is why it's odd that Ingrid is remembered largely as a character detested by Street Fighter fans. The very mention of her name would cause one to froth at the mouth, swearing to the high heavens that she's the worst character in the franchise. How could someone commit this much hatred towards a character that nobody knows anything about? The feedback on Ingrid was the most eye-opening of all the discussions I posted. While we had commenters who had either never heard of Ingrid or swore their undying hatred for her, the majority of comments acknowledged that people hated Ingrid, but no one actually remembers why. She debuted in a throwaway game in 2004 and only made an appearance in a bonus character in a handheld port of Alpha 3 in 2006, and that's it. If you claim that you hate Ingrid's in-game personality and animations, then you are lying because nobody played these games! I played this game. It's an okay port. All joking aside, these games are so obscure that only a small subset of people would have experienced Ingrid firsthand. Those few that did likely formed an even smaller vocal minority and proclaimed that they hated her. And since no one could talk about this character, those few complaints are the only opinions about Ingrid to outlast the game. So if the comments are to be believed, anyone who does hate Ingrid is only hearing about her through the forgotten echoes of a shitty game from 2004. The other common complaint about Ingrid is how much she ruins the canon of Street Fighter by making a jobber out of M. Bison in her very first series appearance. To which I have to ask, 
what cannon? Street Fighter Alpha 3 doesn't exactly have rock-solid cannon to its in-game endings, where everyone makes a jobber out of M. Bison. Karin blows up his base with a satellite laser, Zangief destroys the Psycho Drive by pile-driving E. Honda into it, and each time Bison gets his ass kicked every which way by a Japanese schoolgirl, some random British punk, and Dan! I really wouldn't try to defend the canonicity of Ingrid in Alpha 3 Max because she's a bonus character in a port of a port of a port. If you acknowledge Ingrid as part of Alpha 3's canon, then you also have to acknowledge time traveling Yun. Predictably, Tekken 7's Lucky Chloe was met with the most negative feedback. The hysteria from Lucky Chloe's reveal got so heated that Tekken producer Katsuhiro Harada engaged in a bit of troll warfare on his Twitter from angry fans who demanded Chloe to be removed from the game. To be perfectly fair, I can sort of see where fans may have grown upset with her upon her initial reveal. Tekken 7 was circulated for arcade location tests as early as 2014 with a limited roster, adding new characters with each proper update. The 2015 version of Tekken 7 saw the first reveal of Lucky Chloe, followed by the aforementioned shit show. It's important to note that Eddie Gordo was not yet in the game and wouldn't be revealed until the full title update, Tekken 7 Faded Retribution, for consoles. So between the years 2015 and 2017, people believed that Eddie was being replaced by Chloe. And it wouldn't even be the first time Eddie was replaced by a female counterpart, although I have no memory of anyone actually complaining about Christy. Thankfully, with the reveal of Fated Retribution, Eddie is properly back and no one has to worry about Chloe stepping on his toes. Because now she's kicking him in the sh- oh! If people weren't already sick of Chloe, Eddie fans were now the most vocal about it. Since no one was ever going to bat for Chloe, everyone just agreed that she ruined a longtime fan favorite character. And to be perfectly honest, that's fair. But consider the following. I wouldn't blame you if you were under the impression that Tekken is a serious game, because it sure does a good job of pretending to be one. Yes, the story is largely centered on the Mishima blood feud, but a large part of Tekken's identity has always been about embracing the absurd. The joke elements of Tekken aren't some hidden easter egg or bonus joke mode, they're part of the game, and you can't turn them off. To say that the dramatic elements of Tekken and the goofy elements of Tekken are separate from one another would be disingenuous, because part of Tekken's charm is how often the two overlap. Every character gets to take a turn in the loony bin, no matter how serious. Raven, Dragunov, Lars, Steve, the Williams, even all the Mishimas at one point or another get to feature in one or more joke endings. Heihachi, the cornerstone of the Mishima family drama, had joke endings for three games in a row, and features in countless more. It was only inevitable that Eddie would get his turn in the loony bin. No one escapes the loony bin. If you still feel the need to get upset that Eddie's story takes a break in this game, maybe instead get upset that the writers felt Eddie wasn't important enough to the main storyline featured in Tekken 7. I've maintained criticisms about Tekken 7's story before, but I feel like its greatest failing is pretending that 80% of the cast is inconsequential to the world of Tekken, and imparting some false sense that Tekken is an overly serious melodramatic story. Absurdity is built into Tekken's DNA, and you cannot disregard it. It doesn't surprise me in the slightest that Lucky Chloe ended up being the scapegoat for all this, because it just seemed like the stars had aligned perfectly for people to hate her. I was honestly the most curious about the feedback from these two because I have no idea what the general reception to DOA is like anymore. I remember at the height of its popularity, it was regarded as either ha ha booba or ew booba. And I've been sort of out of touch with DOA now that it's grown into an actually legit fighting game, Booba notwithstanding. But there was one remark among commenters that I feel like I have to address though, and it's the idea that Marie Rose and Honoka have no personality. I have to ask, what counts as having a personality 
to a fighting game character. I can think of several other characters from fighting games whom I regard to have no personality, like Abel. I've done the wiki dive and I've analyzed his in-game presentation, but I could not tell you a single thing about who Abel is as a person. He's French and he has a throw, I guess. Marie Rose, on the other hand, couldn't be more upfront about her personality. It's baked into every bit of her animation, more so than any other girl in DOA. There's a purpose to it all, because her fighting style is Sistema, a martial art that utilizes joint locks and counter holds to turn an enemy's momentum against them using the minimal amount of physical exertion. Marie Rose's posture makes her look vulnerable and harmless, inviting an enemy to attack and giving Marie the opportunity to counter, dodge, or juke an opponent with her small frame. It's a deliberate part of her design and gameplay, and if you look at any footage of Marie Rose and say that she has no personality, then you're lying. The same is largely true for Honoka, whose timid and amateurish fighting posture conceals a frankly genius level of creativity and improvisation using moves that aren't even hers. The other common sentiment about Marie Rose and Honoka is that they've overshadowed the entire franchise. To be fair, even I can see that Marie Rose and Honoka have started to take over the brand. Koi Tecmo even made a Musou crossover game with all of their IPs, and the DOA representatives were Kasumi, Marie Rose, and Honoka. To this, I have to agree. While it's not always a bad case when a popular character is given the spotlight, the emergence of Marie Rose and Hanukkah as the new faces of DOA has cemented in a fundamental change in the DOA franchise as a whole. DOA was at its most popular between DOA 3 and 4, even getting ad spots on American television. She kicks away. <laughs> But it was also during this era when the game had become somewhat stagnant. There was nothing of significance that was really different between DOA 2, 3, and 4, aside from new characters and stages, and the series was sort of falling into a pattern. It wasn't until Itagaki's departure that Team Ninja saw the opportunity to try dramatically new things. A new combat system, new dynamic stages, and a brand new character who broke the norm of what DOA characters had been for years. Marie Rose and Honoka proved to be so popular in Japan that, logically, it made sense to lean into that success. So I can understand that it might be frustrating to see Marie Rose and Honoka everywhere. But how bad is it really? Would you actually consider playing these gacha games if they had Kasumi and Ayane instead of Marie and Honoka? So where does this long, winding road even take us? Why did I even bother bringing up these characters? Well, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed I've been purposely omitting one particular piece of feedback from the comments. A sentiment that is shared between all three posts. She doesn't fit. She doesn't belong in this fighting game. And now I want to ask, why? Why don't these characters belong in a fighting game? Fighting games are a realm in which anything fits, no matter how absurd or unrealistic, because they serve the purpose of expressing character. Capoeira would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. Sumo would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. Drunken boxing would not work in a fight, but it works in a fighting game. What line is being crossed by Ingrid, Lucky Chloe, Marie Rose, or Honoka that hasn't already been crossed before? What part of Suspension of Disbelief refuses to accept these characters when that same Suspension of Disbelief allows for science mutants, genetic godmen, and Zack? If Sakura did not exist in 1996 and was created today in the year 2021, would Sakura not belong in Street Fighter? Never mind the lore, never mind the gameplay, never mind any other pretenses. What is it about the sheer idea of these characters that gets people so tilted? I want to be clear that this is not about gender representation in video games or any lofty highbrow concepts like that. This is about grown men losing their shit about cute girls in frilly dresses in their fighting games. I'm not leading up to a conclusion, and I'm not asking rhetorically. 
I said at the start of the video that I wanted to make sense of the conversation around these characters, but I can't. And so I leave the question to you. If you are the kind of person who cannot accept these characters to exist in a fighting game, why?